Did you say out to you this morning? Did you say something? I said, did she say anything to you this morning? You know, bet. About these predictions of yours, love. Well, there's that too, say, is there? She's had a little joke. You've all had a good laugh. Well, didn't you realise that there was something not quite right? You know, when all these things started to come true, just like you said they would. No, Betty, I didn't. Because I didn't reckon my mates would pull out like that. Just shows how wrong it can be, doesn't it? On your mother's side, you reckoned? Eh? Your uncle, uh, what's it? Ted. Oh, oh, well, it'd have to be, wouldn't it? Seeing as I never knew nobody from my father's side. I don't reckon you've seen a lot of him. I know his type. Aye, so do I. And if he lived a bit nearer, I might just be worried myself. Oh, he's not from round here, then. He moved to Markham a couple of years back. So he says. he just come down from my Auntie Mabel's funeral. Shouldn't you have been there? Well, I didn't know I had an Auntie Mabel, did I? Not till Teddy the Terrible turned up. Oh, not exactly a close family, were you? You could say that. You've got to hand it to Hilda. Long-lost relative, she said. Aye, and as far as our Teddy's concerned, that's the way it can stop. He can't get lost long enough for me. Hey, dreamboat. Hey? Go easy on that table, will you? Rub any harder and you'll be through it. Sorry. Smiles away. Yeah, like the next table. <clears throat> well, go on. Now's your chance. Hey? To whisper the three little words they've been waiting to hear since they came in. What words? There's your tea. Right, Mr. Sugden. One tea, one tea cake, right? Wrong, just a tea. I thought I heard you asking the price of a tea cake. Ah, that's all I did and all. Seventeen pence, I believe. That's right. There's twenty, that's it, Mr. Thanks, Mr. Sugden. Save me working it out. Good. You shouldn't be coming in here, pure elevens. There's not a fella like you. You're quite right. I shouldn't know we told you tea cakes price they are. What, you need a woman in your life to look after your tea and your cakes and all those other little whims and fancies you have at 11 o'clock in the morning? Look, I'll be seeing you. I've got only one thing to do at that centre. Hey, hang on, you change. Keep it, I'll see you. Oh, Tom, Mr. Sutton. Hey, I reckon I'm getting through to him. Hey? Well, he's never left us a tip before, has he? <coughs> Hello, Jim Scott. Yes, Gail? Who is it? I think you said Mrs. Watkins. Mrs. Watkins from Playgroup? I don't know. Hello? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mrs. Tilsley speaking. Yeah, it's been a long journey. Nicholas? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be over as soon as I can. Perhaps for a minute. Aye. Found a pinch of muck at your cylinder egg gasket. Well, I'm thinking of it. Well, I'll get me skates and I reckon I should have it done by tonight. Tonight? But there's no chance of doing this, Thomas Ford. No chance. Have you any idea how much it's costing me? I've been this van off the road. Oh, sorry, mate, but tonight's the best offer. And we're all tools, Well, if that's the best you can do. Yeah. Right, for you. It is. Well, have a clock, then. It's ready before I'll give you a ring, OK? It'll have to be, won't it? Gail. Cheers. Yes, love. Well, Nicky, what's up with him? I'll be around in five minutes. Yeah, ta -ra. Trouble. What's well, Nicky's not feeling so good. What's up with him? I don't know, they just phoned from Playgroup. I'm gonna go and pick him up anyway. Okay. Do you want me to start on Crompton's van when I finish this? I'll be back by then. I'll see you later. Okay. Well, that's another one of life's little mysteries unraveled, at least mm. till next week. And to think I used to reckon the VAT man was a fellow what sucked vodka and tonic. Yeah. While you're playing little Miss Fixit, do you think you could have a word with Hilda? She's got a face right down to her kneecaps this morning. And whose fault's that, then? It wasn't my idea to play that daft trick on her. Tell him that all the predictions come true. And it wasn't me who blew it, neither. If you could have just kept quiet, Betty, Hilda would have been like a dog with two bones this morning. Oh, come on. Put her out of her misery. Tell her that your Uncle Ted did turn up. It'd be something. Oh, aye. And do you reckon we'd ever hear the last of it, after all the mickey-taking we did with them other predictions of hers? Oh, perhaps you're right. I know I'm right, Betty. Believe you me. Phone, Bet. Ah, Wilf, who is it? Mrs. Rigby. Mrs. Rigby? I don't know any Mrs. Rigby. Perhaps it's another of your long-lost relatives, lovey. <laughs> that Lynch? Stella Rigby? I'm sorry. White Swan? Uh, Rectory Gardens, you mean? Well, I know of it. So, uh, what can I do for you, Mrs. Rigby? Okay, Stella. See me? What for? 
Well, thank you very much. Oh, well, any time you like. I'm not going anywhere, am I? Right. I'll see you later then. Bye bye. Stella Rigby. Who she was just at home? Landlady of the White Swan. Mm. She wants to come round for a chat, make herself known to the new landlady of the Rovers. <laughs> Now, what with that system of bells, Mrs. Walker had fixed up. Don't you dare. Somebody back on your feet. Yeah. Come on, son. Here we are. I know when I get the summer top. There's a bit of colour, aren't you, son? You've had to bring him back from Playboy. Ah, poor little son. He don't look so good. Come on, girl, he should be inside. I wouldn't worry if he's right as rain tomorrow. One thing about kids, they're never down for long, are they? I'll see you. So what's up? Yeah, it's uh, young Nicky. Bit off colour, they said. Didn't look too happy with himself. Oh, and then Collie's fresh. Fresh, Hilda. They've been talking back to me all morning. <laughs> oh, now don't you start. There's enough comics round here already. Eh? Hey? That locked down the Rovers. Oh, she got over the shock then, didn't she? Who? Bet. She didn't look too comical when the uncle of hers walked in last night. Uncle? Uh, cousin, you mean. Any road, it wasn't a flipping cousin. It was some third-rate club comic. I'm sorry, Hilda, I'm not quite with you. It was definitely her uncle I saw. Her uncle Ted. Uncle Ted? Ah, she hadn't clapped eyes on him for years. Twenty years or more. Then did he walks, bingo, just like that. Mind you, from the look on her face, if he didn't walk in for another twenty years, it'd be too soon. Uncle Ted, you say? Ah, you must have just missed him. Yeah, I must. Twenty years, eh? Still, like they say, Alf, better late than never. Meat and potato pie, please, better. I don't often see you in here on your own, though. Oh, it's because I'm on my own. I am in here. I can't be bothered cooking for myself. Oh, hey, and I thought it was scintillating conversation, friendly company, and warm atmosphere. Yeah, well, that and all. Can I have the brown sauce, better? Hey, oh, come on, Abby. You'll have it flipping down before they have ordered. Talk about the contrary. First of all, she fancies chicken, yeah, then it's yeah, Jim's yeah. cafe, and now it's here. Are you sure you don't fancy Chinese takeaway? Just get them ordered, will you? Mm. Oh, I'll have two pies and two apple argolos. Right. I'll change the name. Happy now? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Walker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry, Mrs. Walker. Yeah, yeah, And you just happen to end up in the same place as Mr. Muscles over there. Well, it would to you, wouldn't it? Oh, I hope it's coming over. Uh... <laughs> Listen, uh, if you're asking, it's a lager and I've ordered. I'm sorry, Lord, I'd like to, but I've got to get off. Are you going? Yes, got to, I'm afraid. Otherwise, my lads would be running around any altogether come Saturday. Oh, ah, and where's this then? I'm off to the laundrette. Laundrette? Get the rugby gear washed. Yeah. What mothers need them? Yeah, they do. Well, the Mrs. Tate's turn this week, and guess who's gone down with the flu? So if I don't do them... All of them? That's right. Thirteen shirts, thirteen pairs of shorts, and enough socks to stuff a mattress. Ah, well, it's lucky for you that you come in here, then, isn't it? Eh? Well, it sounds like this, we know your friends are, isn't it? You'll do them, Boris. Oh, hey, I think I've enough of them. Them two daft beggars of mine at home. No, but I bet I know somebody not a million miles away from here that will do them for you. Eh, kid? Me? Oh, that's very good of you. Well, I couldn't hand you with that lot. Don't be so daft. She don't mind the other. Well, yeah, there you go then. You sure it's no trouble? No, no, of course it's no trouble. Oh, I talk very much. I do appreciate it. But to tell you the truth, uh, it weren't just the washing. It's the thought of all that ironing. Give us a jar, will you, Beck? Looks like it's going to be a long afternoon. How they all look. How's the little chap then, Ivy? What little chap? Young Nicky. I'm not with you. Have you not been home? No, I'm not. Why? What's up? Oh, it's just Gail and Brian have to bring him back from playgroup, you know. He's a bit off colour, you know. No, I don't know. Listen, I'd better nip home and see what's up. Well, what about all this lot? Oh, well, you see to all this lot, dearie. You seem pretty good at organising everything else round here. 182, please. <laughs> 
Get up. The lights up, please, Bertie. Yeah. Hey, it's funny, isn't it? The things you see in tea leaves. Oh, don't start all that again, love. Little fella, bit on the scruffy side. Let a T in his name. What's up, Bet? Look as if you've seen a ghost. Or a long last relative, more like. I told you, she'd find that sooner or later. Well, I told you, it was in the tea leaves, wasn't it? Well, you never said no to better a little fella. Let a tea in his name. That weren't in the tea leaves. You never asked me, did you? Oh, all right, Hilda. So my Uncle Ted did turn up last night. You got one right now. Can we just forget about the whole thing? Ooh, I only wish it were that easy. Eh? Well, I mean, if it were only just the once I'd seen this relative of yours. You've seen him again? I reckon he could be looming very large in your life. Very large. Something to look forward to, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I'll believe that when I see it, won't I? Mm. I mean, she's not exactly got a brilliant track record, has she? She was wrong with two out of three. I weren't wrong about him, though, was I? Cheers. Hey, when did you see all this? All this about her Uncle Ted again? Oh, must have been this morning, Betty, when I was washing the cups. Yeah, that'll be it. I thought as much. Oh, you crafty little monkey. You never saw no such thing. You never did the washing up this morning. I did. Yeah, well, come to think of it, you could be right. Still, we're not going to fall out over it, are we? I reckon me and her's just about quits now. And that's all that matters, isn't it? All right. Yeah, it's fine now. Fast asleep. I feel better now the doctor's been. Yeah, me too. Hey, why didn't you come and say something? There's my little grandson, Paulie, and there's me prepping bar up at Rovers, knowing no to doubt it. Tell you, I did not till the doctor had come. Has he been? He's just gone. What did you sell off? Chicken box. Oh, poor little love. Is it all right if I go and have a look at him? He's asleep, Ivy. Oh, I won't wake him up. Uh, can you pop out and get this? Yeah, what is it? Nicky's prescription. Well, you can get that, can't you? But I've got to get back. Get back? To work. You don't expect me to stop here. It's dinner hour, Brian. Phyllis and Martin have been running around like scolded cats. Well, that's their hard luck. Nicky needs you here. He needs someone. Yes, you. His mother. Unless you reckon that cat's more important than your own son. No, of course I don't. Right. Then there's no problem, is there? I'll see you later. <laughs> Not much there for your dinner. It's all I want, honest. Look, love, I know it's not easy, but our Brian does have his business to think about, you know. Yes, I know he does. And I have mine, don't I? But I only want him to stay here till the rush was over. Would he listen? No. Never mind that his son's ill in bed upstairs. Never mind that I'm brushed off my feet. Just so long as Brian's all right. Oh, now, come on, Gail, it's not like that. It's exactly like that. Oh, hello. Hello, love. Hey, love. Hello. I brought rubber kit round, Ivy. Vera said his now was as good a time as any. Yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, all right to you? Yeah. Any way you like, George. How's patient, then? He's got chicken pox. Oh, poor little devil. So are you the make, Ed. Anyway, come on, you. We don't hang around here longer than we have to, do we? Are you sure it's no trouble now? I can always take it to laundrette like we're going to, you know. No, no, it's no trouble, George. Right, then, we'll see you over there, then. Uh, I take it your ass will come in. What with work we've got? Listen, if I don't show my face across there, Baldwin will chop me up and have me on a butter. You sure it's no bother now? Oh, George, you're out. It's all very much. I am grateful. Yeah. See, see ya. Good out. Listen, I can't be much longer Miss Hulk, love. I tell you what, you go and fetch Nicky's prescription and I'll hang on till you get back. Hey, there's a chemist near our Brian's ga uh, garage. It's open all dinner. Oh, yeah, there is, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, all right. Thanks, Heidi. All right, love. I'll see you. See you, love. Yeah. You do a lot of alteration work, then, love. Oh, you'd be surprised. Everything from jeans to wedding dresses. Mm. I've just finished a wedding dress, as it happens. Second hand it was, but not a mark on it. Oh, right. Who's getting wed round here, then? Mrs. Harrison's eldest, Mafeking Terrace. Oh, by the heck. 
I can remember when getting married in white men so much. Mm. Shall I tell us some, Matilda? Well, I wouldn't be in too much of a hurry to put your knee in the cotton <laughs> way, Because happens you want that wedding dress made into a christening robe before long. In fact, from what I've heard, if she doesn't get a move on, she could be having both services at the same time. <laughs> 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 yes, love. It's better out. Uh, yes. <laughs> but what? A visitor. Stella. Stella Rigby. Oh, hello. I wasn't expecting to see you just yet. Oh, if it's inconvenient. No, no, it isn't that. It's just that with it being dinner time, I thought you would have been busy and all. We are. But I've left everything in capable hands. At least uh, in hands I can trust. Oh, I... Yes, my husband. At least I hope I can trust him for his sake. Yes. Well, do come through. Oh, I don't mind stopping here for a bit if you're busy. Oh, I think you'll find it's a bit more private through here. Half for you. Thanks. I shall be in the back if you want me, Elizabeth. Cheeky monkey. Yeah, who's she when she's a towel? White swan. Hey? Landlady at White Swan down near at church. Do you know her? Oh, only by sight. I've been there with Harry a couple of times. Uh, well, what's she doing here? Well, according to Bet, she just popped round for a, a chat, you know. She wants to get to know the new laws and maps, but... Uh -huh. Just so long as she doesn't get Bet into her bad habits. Hey? Well, that's the first time I've ever seen her on the right side of a bar. Hi. Hey, what are you doing here? I've been to collect Nicky's prescription. Somebody had to. Who's looking after him? Your mum said she'd hang on. Well, they'll be getting back then, aren't you? I can't leave the cafe, Brian. Love, if I hear one more word about that cat... It happens to be my responsibility, doesn't it? And I suppose Nicky isn't. Yes, he is. But I think you've forgotten something, Brian. He happens to be your son as well. Remember? And I think it's just about time you woke up to that fact. I'll be back as soon as I can. Gail! I don't know whether I should. Suit yourself? Well, perhaps just a small one. <laughs> Say when. Well, they hardly hold enough to bat the budget, do they? <laughs> Cheers again. Cheers. I take it uh, there isn't a Mr Lynch, then? No, no, there isn't. I thought not. That fellow behind the bar didn't seem your type, somehow. <sighs> well, tar very much for that, any road. You did say you were married <laughs> to Miss Inns. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. Paul's very good. I think they quite often are, second time round. Oh, he's your second then? That's right. Gordon was the first. Perfect gentleman in every way. Never forgot a birthday, never forgot an anniversary. I just had to snap my fingers and he was there. God, he was boring. There I go again. I'm just like a gramophone record. Still, I think it comes in handy, don't you, in our game? Um, gift of the gab, I mean. Not that I need to tell you that. Uh, did you say something about a night out? Mm. Yes. We do it about once a month. We, the girls, us landladies, about half a dozen of us usually. We just have a bit of a get-together, good old natter, let our hair down a bit. Nothing naughty, mind. No male strippers are out like that. Oh dear, well in that case, now I'm only joking. It sounds absolutely smashing. I never was one to miss a good old knees up. Not a knees up exactly. Uh, we were thinking of the hare and hounds next time. Oh, the hare and hounds. Not exactly a bag of crisps and a brown ale job, that is it? Not exactly. Look, if it isn't your scene... My scene? Oh, count as in. Do you know, I think I might even get to like this job yet. I thought you had a council meeting to go to, Al. Another half hour yet, look. Anyway, I'm in my lunch hour, same as anybody else. Mm, well, it beats me, honest it does. What does? Why anybody wants to be on council? Well, somebody's got to do it, haven't they? I'd have thought you'd had it up on your plate. Listen, whenever I'm on that council, there's somebody there speaking up for me. Yeah, but you ever get out and done? Ah, <laughs> that's another question, isn't it? Exactly. You know, I'm right glad I came in. It makes everything seem worthwhile somehow. <laughs> Look at that, I've stopping you welcome. Now, don't you be daft. It's been great seeing you. Well, look, don't forget, I want to see you back at my place. And don't go leaving it too long now, are you there? I won't. Won't be dinner time, though, not with our trade. Yeah. What a staff for. Still, if I don't see you before, I'll see you on Wednesday night. Great. I shall look forward to that. Bye-bye, Stella. Bye, Bed. Bye. What's happening on Wednesday night? Was it a dark secret? No dark mm. secret, Betty. I'm off out with the girls, aren't I? 
The girls. Landladies of this parish. We're off to the Hare and Hounds for a slap-up feed. Ah, you're going to be opening up in the world, aren't you? Well, if I don't do it now, I never will, Al. Like the lady said, what's the point of being your own boss if you can't let your corsets out once in a while? I'm sorry, it's like I've told you. Can't do anything for you today. I'll bring it round first thing in the morning. Boss will have a look at it then. I'm sorry, it's the best I can do. Yeah, yeah, he'll give you an estimate of that as well. Okay, cheers. Mr. Compton, how long is it likely to be? Oh, sad to say. Hard to say? We said five o'clock. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, but well, it's not going to be today. Now, hang on a minute. Mr. Tilsley promised me. Yeah, no, and I'm sorry, but Mr. Tilsley's not been in all afternoon. He's had to dash off. Family problems. Where does that leave me? Well, it's like I said, it's not going to be today, so we'll try for tomorrow dinner for you. You're better than try. You'll have it done. Otherwise, you can forget it. And that goes for the rest of my vehicles as well. Got it? Mr. Crumps. Hey, Hop. What are you doing here? What does it look like I'm doing here? Well, where's Gaia? At that calf. What do you mean she hasn't been back? Have you been here all afternoon, then? I know what she said, on the outside. And she phones up and tells me the lad who's working there has gone home with migraine. Flipping migraine. Lovely, how's Nicky? Oh, he's a lot better to me. He's not so flushed, any road. I think I'll just nip up and see him. Hello. What's up, love? Calf fell down, is it? Look, Brian, before you start, don't. I've been run ragged for the past four hours. Well, if you come to me looking for sympathy, you picked the wrong bloke. I intended to be home, honest I did. I didn't know Martin was going to be taken bad, did I? It'll be different tomorrow, I promise it will. You did right, it will. Look, Brian, neither of us bargained on Nicky being ill. We'll just have to make the best of it. Oh, like storm into the garage and then a lowdown in front of Kevin. That's making the best of it, is it? Leave me stuck here all afternoon. Oh, right, Brian. But Nicky is your responsibility as well, you know. Yeah, so you said. Hello? Yes, he is. It's for you, Kevin. Yes, Kevin. He what? Well, thanks very much. That's all we need. No, mate. It's not you I'm blaming. You can't be in two places at once. Listen, thanks for letting me know. I'll see you in the morning. Yes, definitely. Ta-ra. Trouble? He just phoned to tell me the job we promised for tonight's not finished because he had to go and pick some spares up. And now because of that, the servicing contract for old Crompton vehicles is on the line. Not a bad afternoon's work, is it, Gail? I mean, we really made the best of it, didn't we? And the street is back this evening at 6.30. And despite being first broadcast in 1960, the whole of the UK couldn't get the street until 1961. Well, next on Plus, Emmerdale.